been a member of this committee for many years, and I have never seen anything as disgraceful and outrageous and despicable as the last demonstration that just took place about, you know, you're going to have to shut up or I'm going to have you arrested. If we can't get the Capitol Hill police in here immediately, get out of here, you low-life scum. Senator John McCain with an emotional, pro, uh, emotional response to protesters during a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing uh, in which uh, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger was uh, physically accosted. Against that backdrop, let's bring in our panel. No fisticuffs, no physicality, just a good uh, battle of the words and the wits. Uh, from our South Florida Newsmax TV newsroom, Javier Manhattas, the managing editor of the Shark Tank political blog, and smack dab in the center this morning, although he happens to lean leftward, well, more than lean, he makes his political home there. Ellis Hinnikin, a TV and radio personality, uh, things can get rough in committee hearings, but uh, the notion is the public is allowed to come watch, not to comment. Uh, Ellis, was Senator McCain within his rights to respond to those uh, protesters as, quote, low-life scum? Well, listen, it's theater on all sides. Let's recognize this. By and large, though, I find, J.D., that when you want to object to someone else's decorum in a somber environment, using terms like low-life scum maybe isn't the best way to maintain the highest tone. However, everyone understands the drama here. The Code Pink people are there to make a mess. They expect that maybe they'll get arrested. McCain is playing for his bleachers by being outraged. I mean, everyone has a role. Everyone plays their role. And frankly, in the end, nobody gets hurt. Yeah, but Congress ain't entirely kabuki theater. Javier, your take on mostly, it. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah, no, 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 you no. know what, J.D., I agree with, with Ellis 100%. And it is mostly kabuki theater. Like you mentioned, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is one big show. Why do you think they have these com open committee hearings? Look, Code Pink is who they are. They've proven who they are. And look, they can do whatever they want, just like everyone knows we have the right to speak our mind. But yeah, these fools deserve what they got and probably deserve worse because of, of breaking, opening up uh, and interrupting the meeting how they, how they did. But, you know, this is par for the course and this is expected of them. Uh, forgive me, I, I don't uh, want to play uh, Pollyanna to you sophisticated cynics, but there is a role to be played for public hearings, the congressional role of oversight, the congressional role of holding people accountable, the congressional role of a public recitation and discussion of policy priorities. It's not all theater. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, carrying yeah, a brief yeah. for John McCain, but I've been part of plenty of hearings <laughs> on the House side when we would be discussing Medicare and you'd have the lefties would come in and try to disrupt the hearings. And to me, the notion of some, some element of decorum is not too much to expect. Ellis, <laughs> tell me where I'm wrong. Well, you, you, you know, that all sounds great, right? And then you meet the members of Congress, right? Talk about bad decorum, my God. They scream in the middle of the State of the Union. I mean, go talk to some of your colleagues first, J.D. Some, some even eat beer wax. <laughs> well, I will, I'll just tell you this, guys. Uh, certainly our British cousins have a very rowdy uh, format within the House of I like Commons. It. And it's emulated at, uh, at the Oxford Union. Uh, be that as it may. This notion, this heavy-duty dose of Friday cynicism from you guys, I, I understand that it's always popular. I mean, maybe I'm just hey, a recovering member of Congress. Hey, Ellis, we should and I, cer I certainly understand that, uh, that you think at times it's uh, first, last, and always theater. I would just uh, I would take a little bit different view of everything that happens in the Congress. But, hey, people love to hate the Congress. Meantime, the president, Javier, yes. <laughs> is in Philly saying he's going to veto just about everything that comes down the pike. And there's the Keystone XO, uh, XL pipeline passing with over 60 votes in the U.S. Senate. Uh, will that veto, if it comes, be overridden? First of all, let's let's point out that 60 votes minus a Marco Rubio vote, who was in prison to vote. But yeah, he will he will veto it. I mean, and they won't be able to override his veto. They don't have the sufficient votes to do so. And this has been one of the one of the uh, these energy independence issues that he's harped on. He doesn't want it. He, he he's capitulating to his he has capitulated to his uh, lefty base of the the tree huggers, so to speak. But it, it's gonna he'll veto it probably. Real let's quick. let let's let Ellis get his shot. Uh, will it be theater, Ellis, if he vetoes it? 
<laughs> I love, by the way, when Javier and I and I beat up on you. I think that's a good. Uh, oh, that, that's, look, that's I can handle. It. I got broad shoulders, future. pal. I can handle that, no problem. I'm happy to set you both straight. Uh, listen, good. we will. Thank you, sir. We will. We will continue this uh, this very interesting discussion with our political panel, Ellis Hennigan and Javier Manhattan. Return when we come back. According to at least a couple of media accounts, in about 15 minutes, former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney is expected to get on a conference call and tell some of his closest supporters if he will or if he will not run for president in 2016. That's great fodder for our political panel. Let's reintroduce them. Uh, again, from Newsmax New York, on the left, Ellis Hinnikin. TV and radio commentator, and from our Newsmax TV newsroom in South Florida, Javier Manhattis, managing editor of the Shark Tank political blog. Javier, what do you expect Mitt to do in this conference call this morning at 11 o'clock Eastern? I guess he's going to say whatever he's been saying, that, and he's just strongly considering a run. I don't think he's going to give a definitive answer whether he's going to run or not. Uh, but again, he's still testing the waters. Why shouldn't he? It's, we're in January, for God's sake, going into February. Uh, Jeb Bush is going to be his biggest opponent if he does run. They're going to take away from the, they're going to take away from one another. So why, why should he wait? I mean, why should he uh, make an announcement? Now he should wait at least three, four months, I think. So you're telling us it's just going to be an update, and I would imagine yeah. the reason for that is all the legal encumbrances, if he were to suddenly declare himself a candidate, the certain things he could and perhaps could not do. Ellis, is this way premature, and is this an example of over-eager reporting? Do you expect him to tell those uh, supporters that he's going to run or not going to run? Well, listen, uh, Javier has better sources in the inner circle of Mitt Romney than I do, but, but I think it's delicious, right? I, I mean, we've got a couple of races going on at the same time, right? right in, the, in the kind of the, the conventional country club Republican side, we've got Romney and Christie and, and, and Jeb, and then we've got about 1,400 people in the, in the Tea Party scrappy side. And you know what? They're all flawed. You, you can't find one of them that a large number of folks are going to rally around. Maybe someone will emerge, but, but you can tell me who's got a clear path here. I, I, I don't know. You name the person, I'll tell you what's wrong with them. Well, right. Ellis, we appreciate the fact that you're so eager to, to point out flaws on the right, but you have got a candidate <laughs> yeah. uh, ridden with flaws in uh, Mrs. Clinton. But we'll, we'll set that aside, as attractive a target okay. as that might be. We'll set that aside for just a second and get back to the nuts and bolts of what might be going on with Mitt Romney. Javier, yep. you were just back from Iowa. Mm -hmm. We got talk last night that the guy who coordinated the Romney campaign in Iowa has switched to Jeb Bush. Yeah. If, you, if you couple that with the fact that we're going to get some sort of announcement, does that kind of show Romney... Uh, Taking a powder? No, there's a ton of uh, strategists around the country who are considered uh, the strategists, like this guy Kokel in uh, in Iowa. Look, uh, at the end of the day, there's no shortage of, of, like I said, of strategists and staffers. Romney has money. I think he's got like two, three million dollars already in, in his coffer, so he's got a leg up on on Bush and everyone else. Even though Bush is raising a lot of cash, uh, look, I, I would, if I was Mitt Romney, I wouldn't sweat it at all. I wouldn't worry. Uh, well, now uh, Ellis. Just tell us yes, why, <laughs> why uh, going ahead and uh, offering a coronation to Hillary seems to be your um, uh, the approach you'd like to see from the left. Oh, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not supporting that at all. I, I like want a good, robust race. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, to the uh, the hand wringing of uh, Senator Warren. Uh, you know, maybe we'll hear something from uh, the state of Vermont. Uh, if you know who I'm talking about, Howard Dean. Um, there could yeah, be some would, things. Would Bernie would actually have to. Bernie, Bernie would have to register as a Democrat. He's uh, an independent Bernie socialist might make the race? right now. Bernie Sanders. I mean, yeah. I. Do I do think that the Democrats are going to have an easier path finding a nominee than you guys are. But you know what? I love it. I think the, I think the, the rough and tumble of the primary process is exciting. It keeps us uh, busy and gives us something to talk about. And, um, I, you know, I'll make you a deal, J.D. You find no flaws in Hillary and I won't find any in, uh, in your guys. We'll just let them self-destruct on their own. How yeah. about that? Well, I will tell you what. Uh, as one who has been through plenty of campaigns, I usually find if you win... 
you're a master campaigner, and if you lose, you're exactly. inherently flawed. So that tends exactly. to be the crucial. And there's a lot of consultants yeah. who will take your money in the And meantime. they're happy to take the money and then rag right. on you anonymously to Absolutely. certain publications. Boy, don't I know about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank uh, God for uh, We welcome that debate on the, on the Republican side. It'll be a slugfest, to say the least. Well, we on that point of fun. unanimity, we thank you for your time. Gents, uh, enjoy your weekend and the Super Bowl. Ellis and Javier, thanks so much. Coming back with the way I see it about Sunday's big game.